be sure to subscribe, keep pounding, underscore TV, the best Panther YouTuber ever. I'm rocking with the big cat. Pause up. Keep pounding. What's going on? Christian Miller here, linebacker of the Carolina Panthers. Just want to give a huge shout out to Keep Pounding TV. Keep doing what y'all are doing. Appreciate all y'all support. Everybody go subscribe right now to the YouTube channel, Keep Pounding TV. I'm rolling with the big cat. Hey, 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 everybody. I'm your host, the Granny Gato, also known as the big cat. My cool cat, bitch. Pause up if you're rocking with the big cat. Today, we're here to talk about Steven Weberly. Saying he had got complacent in Carolina. What exactly does that mean? Oh, what does that mean? I'm bored, y'all. I think I'm complacent with this. Oh, I'm sorry with the podcast. But first, before we get started, do you love the Carolina Panther? I love the Carolina Panther. Soccer Chad! Yes? No? Maybe? Do you love my Carolina Panthers? Like, I love my Carolina Panthers. Yes, no, maybe. If you love the Carolina Panthers, put your balls up. Put your balls up. <sighs> Complacency. Let's get into it. <laughs> Before we get started, make sure you subscribe, click the notification bell so you don't miss the video. Be sure to check out Fan of Fan Network, FTFN on um, uh, YouTube. Also, fanfannetwork.com, 32 fan about to get the bill from a fan perspective. Stephen Weverly has been re-signed or been released by the Carolina Panthers and picked up by his former team, the Minnesota Vikings. And in the interview Monday afternoon, he spoke about being complacent in Carolina. Okay. What exactly does that mean? And, and, and and does it have a negative connotation attached to it? We're going to talk about two perspectives here. I want to be fear. I'm a fear guy. And I got a theory here. But but I'll tell you, I'm, I'm excited about this topic. Let's look up the word complacent. According to Miriam Wester, he say, Complacent, marked by self-satisfaction, especially accompanied by awareness of actual dangers of deficiency. Definition two, complacent Definition three, unconcerned. Oh, I'm unconcerned. Now, with that being said, let's see what he had to say. Suck of shit. <laughs> Look at your screen right here. <clears throat> one of the things, excuse, and I quote, one of the things I definitely learned about myself this past year was that I don't need to be safe, that I need to continue reaching and striving forward. I think I openly admit that my time in Carolina was kind of happy Oh, excuse me. Oh, I was kind of happy about the deal I had signed and a little bit of complacency set in. That can't happen. No matter what, uh, I need to be striving and reaching for the next step. And if I do, if I slip or if I fall, if I fail because I was reaching for greatness, not that it was snatched away from me like holding on to something so tight. That's definitely something I learned being out and coming back. It definitely one of the things that I'm bringing back to the fight, the grind, that let never let complacency set in again, especially when it comes to something like this, like football. Close quote. Mm. Now, when I hear him say he got complacent here, he was happy he signed a two-year deal, which he didn't make it to see to the second year. Um, and obviously he had an injury where he missed uh, a couple games here. Um, in nine starts, he had 26, uh, tackles, excuse me, had 17 tackles, one tackle for loss, three quarterback hits, no sacks. Complacency, y'all. I want to say this and I want, I'm, being, I'm trying to, be, I'm, I'm a little slow right here because I'm trying to be careful here. Is this, uh, indicative of Matt rules ability to develop now again, I'm just going to give this as an alternate perspective is not saying that this is but Matt rule and a lot of people are the owner and, and the Scott fitter chatters are going around that they're willing to offer all their draft picks or, or something of a generous helping of draft picks and when you hear stuff like this complacency setting in you got to look like how does that happen now obviously he said he was happy he got the money you know what I mean? He kept it a buck. He said, I got the money. You know what I mean? I didn't realize how he thought Carolina was sweet. 
Hey, shit, this is sweet over here. Ah, damn, this is like a bowberry. <laughs> this is sweet. He thought it was sweet. Got the money, I could fall back. You know what I mean? Took it for granted. Unaware, even. But how do you, how does that... How do you uh, how are you allowed to feel that way? Been in the league almost six years. I promise you this: if you go up there to New England, nobody's sitting up on the Bill Belichick talking about shit. I thought it was sweet up here. You get up there, you start feeling sweet, your ass is unemployed. Look what he did to my man uh, uh, Malcolm Butler. <laughs> nigga won him a Super Bowl. Shit, nigga didn't start the next Super Bowl. He was running late or something like that. So. Again, I feel like the coach has to set that atmosphere. You know what I mean? He has to set the atmosphere and let these guys know when you're on this field, you know what I mean? When you're, when you're in the locker room, you know what I mean? You got to establish that culture to where you got to feel like you, you're, you're fighting for your job, even if you're not. Even if you're not fighting for your job, but you got to feel that way. You're fighting for your job on every rep, every play, every time you walk in the building, every time you study, every time you take a test. You got to feel like that. You know what I mean? You coming out here saying you were sweet because you got paid. And, you know, I'll tell you this, but but I, I got to give the organization and Matt real credit for recognizing that shit. This wasn't it. But it, it, this concerns me. This, this concerns me when it comes to developing players here. Let's take a look at some. I want to pull some up real quick. 2019 free agency, which is this class. Guys that were brought in under Matt Rule. Matt Rule gave guys the opportunity. And this this is, this is I'll talk about Stephen Webber here in a minute. I'm going to give you my other perspective here in a minute. Just give me a second here. But these are the guys that Matt Rule brought in. He wanted a fresh start. My people. Guys who want to win. These are the words that come out of his mouth. People that fit my organization. Now you're starting to realize, wait a minute. When, you, when I read this list off to you, didn't he say these guys are the people that wanted to be here to fit my organization? Check this out right here. Brought in Teddy Bridgewater. Three years, six, three million dollars. A year later, uh, time to trade. Now, obviously, I believe uh, uh, Herney was the guy who, you know, who had the final say so. But I'm pretty sure Matt Rule's uh, input weighed heavy. Steven Weverly, two years, gone. Um, let's see. Justin Burris, probably gone. Um, let's see. Trey Boston, sign a re-extension, gone. You know what I mean? Hey, D, you got you to gotta start asking yourself. <laughs> now you guys are seeing why Scott Fitter was kind of being brought in. And I can't, I can't totally say Matt Rule doesn't really have an eye for talent like that. I can't say that. Oh, and let's not forget about, uh, what's that dude's name? The, 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 the linebacker. Uh, what's this guy's name? Tahir Whitehead. Yeah. So... I can't say he doesn't have an eye for talent, but I definitely believe he needs help from Scott Fitter. He definitely needs help from Scott Fitter because three or four guys who I just ran off here, and he did get it right. Let me let me let me slow down. He did get it right with Robbie Anderson. Okay, you know, got some depth out of John Miller. You know what I mean? I don't know if he'll be back or not, uh, but you know, at times he looked good. You know, we don't know what we quite got out of PJ yet, so I can't I can't give him a strike for that, but. When you look at the four people I just read off, what is Weatherly, Teddy Bridgewater, Justin Burris, and possibly Tahir Whitehead, oh, Trey Boston, that's five, excuse me. I mean, you got to ask yourself, wait a minute. You opened your mouth and said that I want to build the organization with people who want to be here and people who fit my design, and this, well, these five people are gone now, or slated to be gone. So... <laughs> Really, you have to ask yourself about the establishment of the culture. What's really going on here? You know what I mean? And I, I believe he needed help, man. I believe Matt Rule is a good coach. I do. He's, you know, he's going to be a good coach, man. Hopefully one day he'll be a great coach, but you definitely start to raise your eyebrows. Maybe we'll give him a pass because it's year one. You know, I'm not sitting here saying Steven Weatherly's a fucking all pro or nothing. You know, at best, Steven Weatherly has only had three sacks, so... You know, it's not hard to see why he will be, uh, what is, what is it, uh, complacent. <laughs> two, two million dollar deals off a, uh, off a three sack career. You know what I mean? In your high season with three sack, you probably would get complacent. Somebody offer you more than like one year deal. So, um, but ultimately that was just one perspective. I believe is Matt rule. You know, is he going to get that stigma of, I brought this guy in and then turn around and say, well, he didn't fit our system, you know? That whole kind of thing. And it, how good of a developer is he? 
We know college is different, you know what I mean, from the NFL. Well, that play is different. But I, I honestly, can I be honest with you? I honestly believe none of that is, is, is really too relevant, okay? I honestly believe this whole thing is Stephen Weatherly uh, uh, um, lost focus. I think he lost focus. He lost sight that this is a, a once-in-a-lifetime kind of job, once-in-a-lifetime kind of opportunity to go out there and, 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 and play a game for a living and make millions off of it. Um, this is indicative of him being um, unfocused. Uh, 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 I don't want to say ungrateful, just unfocused. And I feel like he kind of struggled with the grasp of grasping the concept of I had an opportunity here. I think about this, man. You got an opportunity on a brand new team, brand new coach to make a hell of an impact to where, you know, this is a fresh start. I mean, you, you possibly could get big money if you ball out. Let's say he came out here and had like 15, 16 sacks. He could have possibly earned himself some money. You know what I mean? But uh, ultimately, I believe he struggled with something. You know what I mean? This tells you what kind of player he is um, or, or was, you know. Um, I don't know. I just don't know, man. I'm, I'm torn between this one. I kind of feel like it was the atmosphere. I, I kind of feel like, you know, ain't no way in hell you can sit up on my fucking team and think it's sweet like that. And again, kudos to Bill Belichick. I, I know you ain't going up there thinking it's sweet, complacent. Hello, man. You know? Did he just steal off on Matt Rule? Do we have a development problem already? All these questions must be asked. But uh, shout out to Stephen Webley. Good luck with that glass blowing. Blow you a bong. Two balls, man. I'm your host, that Grand Got to Austin on the Big Cat. My cool kid, oh, what's up? Let's rock with the Big Cat. Tell me what you think about Stephen Webley's comlet. <laughs> Fucking nigga, tell me he got complacent. <laughs> oh boy, twelve million dollars. Average shit. <laughs> Mediocrity shit. Unaware shit. I'm your host, like running got all the big guys. Both guys, why put the paws up? You fucking with me? Tune in tonight, man. Um, I think we're gonna go live tonight. Tune in tonight about nine thirty. I've been busy this week. I took today off, man. I told my boss I'm not feeling well, y'all. My back. I need a back out of me. <laughs> So, yeah, I'll definitely be in here with a heating pad giving you guys some love, all right? Make sure you subscribe, tune into the podcast. Follow me on TikTok, almost 60K. Dun, 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 dun. We killing it over here, T-H-E-B-I-G-G-K-A-T-T. -T. Let's get up out of here. Let the church say, pause up. I'd like to take the time out to thank Keep Pounding TV membership sponsors below. It is because of supporters like you that we're able to create quality content. Please consider joining the Keep Pounding TV membership by clicking the join button right above the channel header. With three different tiers and packages, we have a little something for everybody and affordability. Make sure you join. Pause up. Fellas, do you have a beer like Big Cat? You tired of your shit looking like Anthony Hamilton? Okay. Patches all in it. Check out Shoshana's Blue Sapphire Oils. Help moisturize and restore health back to your beard. Trishana Jones Oils, Blue Sapphire. The link is in the description below. Be sure to check out On The Live Show Radio. Check out the latest Christian hip-hop slash R&B. Be sure to also subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hi, I'm the Big Cat. Pause up! You're watching Fan to Fan Network, the voice that fans deserve.